So for a problem like E two H four gas <coughs> plus oxygen gas, you'll see two H four O gas. <coughs> And the problem asks, uh, first to balance. And how do you know it's not balanced already? Well, if you divide it into two sides, the left and the right, left side has two carbons, right side has two, left side has two oxygens, right side has only one. Left side has four hydrogens, right side has four, so so the oxygens are off. Okay, when you balance equations, um, try starting with the ugliest molecule. <clears throat> what I mean is just the largest one that you might not even want to um, look at till the end. This is the largest one, so start here. Okay, two, two carbons on the right, two carbons on the left, now we have only one oxygen, uh, but we have two oxygens on the left. So what can we do to this to make two oxygens? Let's make this a two. So the second step would be to add the coefficients. So when you add coefficients, it's saying that this whole molecule has to be doubled. Okay? You can't go in and change the atoms themselves. Like I can't go in there and put a put a two to the lower right of the oxygen. That doesn't work that way. I, the only way I can manipulate the number of atoms that I have so that the equation balances is to use stoichiometry. That means adding coefficients. But you're multiplying the entire molecule. So now it's gonna throw things off a bit. So, <clears throat> for um, the right side, we now have two times two carbons, which means we have four. And we have two times four hydrogens, which means you have eight. So, in the process of balancing the oxygens, two on the right, now two on the left, we threw off the carbons and the hydrogens. What can we do to this guy to make it balance? Well, just add a two. All right. So now let's see what we got. Four carbons on the left. Two times four, eight hydrogens on the left. How about the right? Two times two is four carbons on the left. Two times four is eight hydrogens on the right. Two oxygens on the left. And uh, two oxygens on the right. So this now balances. All right, right. <coughs> Normally, when you balance, if you've done it correctly, you're going to save the smallest molecule for last, or the cleanest looking one, or simplest one. And the reason being is because this oxygen is the easiest to manipulate. In other words, it turned out we only needed one of these guys, but let's see if I needed two, three, or four. I would just put the coefficient in front and it would only change the number of oxygens. There's no other atoms associated with it. So just to keep it simple, start with the largest molecule first or the ugliest one. And uh, don't worry about the smallest one until last. So with this problem, you notice that we, we, we didn't touch this O2 okay, until the very end where we saw, okay, we can leave it alone or put an invisible coefficient of one in front of it. It's the same thing. So this is now balanced. Now, let's say for the second part of a problem, it said, how many grams of the, uh, this is actually acetaldehyde, are formed? If you start with, for example, 6.3 grams of this guy. This is ethylene. So 
So five grams of product. If we know uh, a certain number of grams of reactant, <coughs> first thing you need to do is always, when you're comparing two different types of molecules, convert to moles. Always. The whole reason we have moles is because all these different atoms have different properties with different masses. The only way to compare them is to put them in those baskets, which are moles. Moles just looks at exact quantity, not necessarily the physical properties. So in other words, let's change C2H4 to moles. <coughs> so we have 6.2. Grams of C2H4. And now we know that mole equals mass over molar mass. Where do we get the molar mass from? Well, that's easy. There's a periodic table. So we have 6.2 grams over. What's the molar mass of C2H4? Well, it's 12.011 times 2 write this up here or 2 times 12.011 plus 4 hydrogens which is 1.0079 or 4 times 1.079 Let's add those up and see what we get. Twenty-four point oh two two for carbon. And four point oh three one six for hydrogen. Which can equal twenty eight point oh five three six all around to 28.0534, keeping in mind our rule of significant figures. So now, how many moles of C2H4 do we have? 6.2 divided by 28.054. 0.221, but remember our significant figures is, uh, let's just say it's 0 0.22 mole. Yeah, with regard to significant figures, for an exam, always consult, just consult your professor first. Uh, they might get picky with how many significant figures they want reported. So it, it, if it's not written in the instructions, it always helps to double check. So now we have 0 0.22 moles of C2H4. Some people actually make the mistake of when they convert to molar mass, they say, oh, well, we have two moles, so we got to put a two in front of the molar mass. No. The molar mass is always grams per mole. That's for one mole. Okay? Don't let the store get how much it confuse you. So in other words, even though this coefficient in front is 2, 6.3 grams of C2H4, no matter what this coefficient states, is 0.22 moles. Now the coefficient comes into play because we now see we have a 2 to 1 actually a 2 to 2 ratio in terms of moles of C2H4 and C2H4O. In other words, they're equivalent. So if we have a 2 to 2 ratio, which is 1 to 1, of C2H4 to C2H4O, that means we also have 0 0.22 moles. 
if this coefficient hypothetically was, let's see, a 10, we would have to multiply by 5 because it's now a 2 to 10, a 1 to 5 ratio of moles. So the coefficient states how many molecules of how you have or how many moles you have in your product in relation to the reactant. So in this case, it's pretty simple. It's just 1 to 1. 0.22 moles of C2H4 means we got 0.22 moles of C2H4O. All right. So if we have 0.22 moles of C2H4O, how many grams is that? Well, we know that mole equals mass or grams. Over molar mass, which is grams per mole. But now we want to solve for mass because we have the moles this time. So we'll multiply each side by mm. So now we have mm times mole equals mass in grams. And that's what they're asking for. So all we need to do is multiply the number of moles we have, which is 0.22, times the molar mass of C2H4, which we have to find out. Actually, I'm sorry, C2H4O. C2H4O. Well, again, it's 2 times 12.011 plus... 4 times 1.0079 plus carbon, atomic weight of hydrogen, atomic weight of oxygen, 15.999. 1 times 15.999, and that equals. <coughs> Well, I know it's 28.054 plus 15.999, but just to double check my work, I'll multiply it out again. Twenty-four point zero two two for carbon. And I tack on the 15.999, and I get. 44.0526, which is 44.053. To get my mass, multiply that by 0 0.22. 9.6915, Nine point seven grams. Remember my rule of significant figures when I multiply I have two significant figures here, that means I need two of my answer. There you have it. So that was nine point seven grams of this guy. If I initially react 6.3 grams of this guy. If you remember that your intermediary or your currency is actually your moles, where you have to first convert to mole and then convert back out of mole, you'll always get it right. Just use the periodic table and you won't go wrong.